Hey, welcome to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today I am talking to the one and only Mickey Lee. Mickey Lee has been many things in this life. A guitarist, a songwriter, a roadie, an author, a cabbie, a bartender, even a drug dealer. But to some people, he will always be one thing, Joey Ramone's little brother. And there's no denying that their stories are intertwined. In fact, you could call Lee the fifth Ramone. He was in a teenage band with Johnny and Tommy long before Joey came along. He sang backup on the Ramones' first album. He was the band's roadie for years. And he contributed to plenty of their songs over the decades. But along the way, he's always done his own thing, too. He started the group Birdland with notorious rock critic Lester Bangs. He made music with the Rattlers, Stop, Sibling Rivalry, with You Know Who, and plenty of other bands. In 2009, he published I Slept with Joey Ramone, a family memoir, which is now being made into a Netflix movie starring Pete Davidson as Joey, if you can believe that. But this year, Mickey Lee finally released the first album with his name on the cover, Variants of Vibe by Mickey Lee's Mutated Music. Does some of it sound like the Ramones? Sure. But it also sounds like the Stooges, the Who, Question Mark and the Mysterians, the Monkees, the Dead Boys, Suicide, Johnny Thunders, Billy Idol, Jim Carroll, Tom Petty, and even Simon and Garfunkel. Basically, it's a loving tribute to the sounds that Mickey and Joey grew up listening to, loving, and learning from. A few weeks before the album dropped, Mickey and I connected on Zoom for a wide-ranging talk about the record, the movie, his life, and pretty much everything else. Here's how it went. Enjoy. Nice to see you again. You would not remember this, and I wouldn't expect you to, but we spoke briefly, I think it was 2011 at the Grammys when you were there to get the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award uh, on behalf of the, the Ramones. Yeah, to, uh, to 2012. 2012, okay. Yeah. I remember you getting up and telling them that they should throw Bieber off the TV show and they should air this. That was that was great. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think it, that was funny, and sometimes I think, oh boy, what, what was I doing? But um, well, you know, years later they started airing that that whole ceremony thing on TV, so you were just ahead of the curve. Uh, they started uh, airing the achievement. Yeah, part? yeah, a few years oh. ago they started. They turned that into like a nighttime TV special, you know, and they were. So you'd have all the old clips and then people would get up and talk. It was the same thing, except just not Maybe in the theater. Some, uh, so, impact on that. That's all you're doing, I mean, man. It didn't make any sense. Anyway, you it know? It makes sense now. And then uh, the next day we went to the thing. At, uh, it was the, uh, what arena was that? The Staples. Lakers. Staples, Staples, right. And um, some guy was supposed to get acknowledged for a lifetime achievement award uh george something i forget he was in a wheelchair sort of one second boom uh julie andrews but uh, that was it yeah well uh i guess uh you know ratings rule <laughs> right that's right so let, let's get down to what, what, what we're here to talk about, and that is Mickey Lee's Mutated Music's new album, Variants of Vibe. Yeah. You, you, really, you really went for a mouthful there with all of that, you know? <laughs> well, you know what? Believe it or not, um, started making this album about a year ago, mm -hmm. over a year ago. It was actually before the variant thing uh, became prevalent. You know, the it was before the um, what's the one the, the Delta variant, yeah, and before the Omicron, uh, it was just COVID at the time. And I, they had mentioned something about variants, but it wasn't here yet, right? The mutated music I, I've had uh, since the '80s. I started a uh, publishing. I had to start a publishing company for. Uh, you know, to collect for songs I wrote. Uh, so I, I decided to, to call it Mutated Music. That was um, like 1982. And then I just, you know, maybe a few years ago, I thought it's a great name for a band. 
So, you know, I was, uh, after I wrote the book and uh, finally had time to get back to my own life, I wanted to uh, have a, you know, keep, start playing again. I had written a lot of great songs, but, um, uh, you know, I didn't know, people were telling me I should just use my own name, Mickey Lee, because uh, of the book, people don't, but I've, I've never felt really comfortable being in that, you know, right. Uh, just a band with uh, you know without a, a band name right, you know right. um so i call it mickey lee's mutated music which is my publishing company hopefully we can get established mutated music well enough that we could just drop the mickey lee oh okay well cool but still yeah. it must be nice to, to have your name front and center on something for once i'm i'm self-conscious about it really <laughs> You know, I've always been like, you know, I like the, the band thing, like, you know, it's we're all, you know, but luckily I've been playing with these guys for uh, 25 years, some, I want the, uh, the bass player even a little longer, and we uh, just have this, uh, you know, incredible camaraderie, and they're, they're, they are, they get it, and they know that our best shot is uh, just, just to put that first, put that forward, and then hope for the best, and you know, they, they can't really argue. My, I write all the songs, I sing them, I produce them. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, so uh, I, well, I, I know some of these songs me. are. I know some of these songs are are older. Um, so what's what's the sort of date range here? Um, all over the place, really. Uh, not not. not None of those songs, they might be older, but none of them have ever been released. Right. No, I know that you haven't put them out before. I'm assuming all the recordings are new, but I mean, I, I know like, uh, I mean, you've got uh, Loneliness on there, which is obviously a leftover from the Birdland stuff. And you've got, uh, you've got Go Home Ann, which, which was first on this one. Um, right. Which I co-wrote that song. Sorry? I co-wrote right. Go Home right. Um, but I never recorded it. Right. But uh, so, so are, I mean, are, were you sort of pulling songs that you had written or co-written from how far back? And, and how, you know, and did you, were you writing new ones to pass yeah, out or what? Yeah. How did that work? You know? At least half of them are, have been written in the past two, three years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I put out a uh, little EP a while ago that had some other new songs because I did that because originally this album was supposed to come out in November, but because of the uh, backup of the pressing plants and all that, they pushed it back to February. So, so last June, I decided that I want, we got to keep getting things out, you know? So I made this little uh, three song EP called um, Summer Fun, Some Aren't. <laughs> And um, so that had a couple of, had one new song, one brand new song, two older ones that I had recorded with uh, Joe Blaney, producer who blew, uh, produced the Clash Combat Rock album work with Alicia Keys. But that was like a long time ago. Right. So I shortened the songs, I changed them around a little bit, modernized them, I hope, but nobody, unless they know, like you, nobody thinks, oh, this sounds like an old song. Oh, no, no, they definitely don't sound dated at all. I, I'm just curious as to, I mean, you've obviously written a lot of songs over the years. Um, what was it about this handful that you that made you go, you know what, uh, I've never recorded these and, and these are ones I want to sort of pull up and, and redo and get out there? Uh, well, I always, you know, I was always, um, Kind of disappointed that we, me and Lester never got to record uh, that song. Well, there's a lot of songs he and I wrote together that we never even got to record. There's that one album, I don't know if you know about it, um, called Birdland. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I, it's great, right? Yeah. And, um, but we didn't get a lot of the songs on there, and I always loved Loneliness. So I said, why not? Do it. I mean, I don't. What's the difference when it was written, or is it if it's still a great song? Yeah. Who cares, right? And um, maybe three or four others 
uh, fit into that category. Actually, actually um, it's kind of, I don't know if I should say this, but uh, the bass player I'm with, we had a deal with Epic Records in 1989. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a four song, I did a four song demo before he was in the band. Then we got this deal with Epic, which my brother kind of helped us get. Right. Uh, with a guy named Ma uh, Michael Kaplan. And they said, uh, they we had to do this whole nine album, 12 year deal, you know. Uh, but then they gave us $30,000 and said, take four months, record four songs. And then they had an, a month after that to uh, either pick up the option or not. And so they didn't hear a, a hit song or a great song. And that's one of those is a, one of the coolest songs in the world. <laughs> last, the last one, it's called No Fun Anymore. No, yeah, that's a great uh, one. Right? No, well, but, what do record companies know? Come on, you know. Really, you know, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> they're probably, you know, uh, and some of the other ones are going to be on this album too, actually, but um, or one other one. But, um, you know, nobody ever heard them. Nobody ever heard these songs. That's, that's no. great. We are, and and I got to say, variants of vibe really kind of it, it suits the album in terms of the amount of styles you've got going on here. I mean, I think I, some people are going to come to this album expecting one thing from you, and they're going to get like you know seven or eight. I mean, obviously, if if you're a Ramones fan, they're going to hear a bit of that, and they're not going to be disappointed. But I mean, I think you know if you're a fan of the Stooges. Uh, the Who, Tom Petty, uh, Jim Carroll, question mark, and the Mysterians, the Seeds. I mean, you know, there's something for almost every fan yeah. of every era of guitar yeah, rock. Yeah, the, the very last song on the album, it's called uh, La 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 La. Yeah, well, that's Simon and Garfunkel, isn't it? <laughs> that's what I was just going to say. This is got, you got Simon and Garfunkel too, right? Yeah, well, yeah, and a bit of suicide. I mean, I could just keep going on and on and on. It sounds like you've like put no your whole it's record collection no into this. Uh, sorry, uh, it was no homage to uh, Simon and Garfunkel and uh, uh, Billy Joe, uh, Times of Your Lives. Okay. Yeah, but more Simon and Garfunkel because they're they're my neighbors or were. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, they're from Forest Hills. Oh okay, okay, right. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds like you kind of condensed your whole record collection into this album, you know? Um, I I guess I did. Um, well, not the whole. No, but, uh, a bunch of it. I was into so much stuff over my life, the jazz and um, uh, classical music, you know, country music. Yeah. Um, and I just, that's been my problem, I think, with getting a record deal. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I have a bit of a cold and I'm on antibiotics. I got a tooth uh, infection. Ouch. The, the problem has always been with these record company people. Well, we don't know where to put you. It's not pop. It's not punk. It's not metal. It's not, you know, uh, um, it, you know, with the, when I was growing up with Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix albums and The Who, you didn't have to worry about that, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I could see for miles and miles and then Mary Ann with the shaky hands and or you, you could have um, you know I'm lonely I want to die on a Beatles album and then there's Rocky Raccoon yeah so you know um, and that's what what I grew up on those you know that kind of versatility you didn't have to limit what you were doing and I just refused <laughs> Well, good for you. Uh, you know, and the thing is, I don't think you've ever really, uh, you know, you kind of hide your talent under a bushel because I know you've studied music and and you, you know, you're, you're, you play umpteen instruments and you can play jazz and you can do all these other things. Is it that you just keep sort of reverting back to rock and punk and pop because of that's, you know, what's just in your bones, what you grew up on loving? I grew up on, yeah. Okay. The first song I ever heard was, uh, or remember hearing, I mean, aside from the children's songs, so was uh, La Bamba. Right. And that that kicked it off. I mean, my mother said to me, like, why are you jumping around like that? You know, the beat, man, you know? Yeah. Um, nothing affects you like that, really. 
you know. Uh, I guess that's uh, the beauty of rock and roll. But um, I mean, you know, there's other all kinds of exciting music uh, and salsa and Spanish beats, and I just love checking out even like um, um, Greek leaders and and um, you know the kind of music that from the Mediterranean, and it's it's all very strange. Um, at one point, I had a band called New York Orchestra. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, my real plan for it was to find somebody of every ethnic origin and put them all, to, put us all together, and make combine our, you know, cultural uh, rhythms and melodies and and see what came out of that, you know. But it was a big endeavor, and it, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. couldn't pull it off. But you so did I just recorded a bunch loneliness of... with that with those guys too, right? Was that you recorded loneliness with them too, right? I think with the New Yorker show. Yeah, I think so. No, I mean, um, I think it's on your YouTube page. I recorded that with with the guys in the Rattlers. Oh, okay. Who was who were the guys in Birdland? Oh, okay. So yeah, and about uh, that was a long time ago, man. After Lester died, um, maybe sometime in the mid '80s, uh -huh. late '80s, we just did, went into the studio and recorded a we, a bunch of the songs that we had done with Les. We we me and my, the bass player had a big plan. We even wrote out this whole um, you know proposal. To, we're taking it around to people to <laughs> wanted to try and get. Bruce Springsteen to cover a Lester song. And, there you go. You know, it was a really bold undertaking. So it, it was hard to pull off, but we wanted to uh, record some of the songs that we didn't get to record that night on uh, April Fools. That uh, they we our bass player snuck us into Electric Ladyland, huh. and we we made uh, recorded those nine songs. Right. But there were a lot of others that we. I mean, there's all, a whole album I'd like to, you know, in res with respect to Lester, because his lyrics were amazing. He couldn't really sing that spectacularly, but he had the spirit. He could write. <laughs> he could write. But actually, that was really tricky, too, because um, he didn't write like a songwriter. He wrote more like a writer. And to, for the guy writing the mute, trying to put his words to music, it was a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Like hurting uh, a cat. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. Or like, you know, trying to put a, a, a cube into a round vase or something. But um, that's going to be 40 years now. Come, we're coming up on 40 years since he passed. That's unbelievable, wait. man. Wow. It was 81? Um, 82? 82. Yeah. 82. May of 82, I think. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah. talking about talking about record companies, um, it would seem that that Steve Van Zandt's Wicked Cool is kind of the perfect place for you to put this album out. I couldn't be more thrilled. I mean, uh, how did that come about? Um, well, I've known Stephen for you know uh, since the eighties. Uh, On City Days, I would imagine. Yeah, he used to do something uh, at a place called the Cat Club on Thirteenth Street in Manhattan. The manager of my band, the Rattlers, uh, was the manager of that club as well. Hmm. So I was, used to hang out there all the time. And Stephen had a night there once a week that he would do something. And uh, that's where I first met him. And he, he became friends with my brother, of course, and because uh, he hung out there. So we all hung out at the Cat Club. And um, so they became real good friends. And my brother did that. Um, the Sun City thing with him. And uh, so I've known him for a long time. And um, nothing, not like we go have lunch every week or something, but, you know, I could call him up anytime. And when I finally finished that book and was starting to, you know, think seriously about wanting to finally get something out, I called him up. And um, actually, you know, it started when... Uh, I was making my brother's second solo album called You Know. Right. Uh, 
and he was in the studio at the same time. So, and he played on some a bit on that album, and I played him a song that I just had played on my guitar and do a webcam, and he said that was fucking great, you know. I'd like to put it out. I want to produce it. This is 2012. And uh, the song is called uh, Stories That Never Got Told, Never Get Old. Right. And um, so, I don't know, something happened after that. I'm not sure what. Uh, probably a bunch of Ramones business. Like there was a museum exhibit. Um, there was some uh, other problems. <laughs> It's it, it's really consumed my life, unfortunately, or a yeah. big part of it. And uh, but then when I was getting, you know, got back into the studio, I got back in touch with Stephen, uh, sent him the stuff, and um, he he loved it. Actually, I can uh, maybe show you a text he sent. Oh no, I think I erased it. But um, I, I I have a picture of it. He just said, "This is, this shit is fucking great." He knows yeah. <laughs> right. But for some reason, he, he at first um, he, he only wanted to put out singles, mm -hmm. um, and then he decided to put out a whole album. So has this kind of lit a fire under you and, and kind of, uh, you know, are you writing more? Are you, are you kind of already thinking about the next oh, yeah. album? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I have, I have so many songs and they're really good. So, but I, I, I don't like to rest. I, I, I did always want to get the songs that I thought were great that never got to see the light of day. I wanted to finally, you know, let them out. <laughs> Um, so that was great for this. I've been, I'm, in the meanwhile, I'm, I've been writing a lot of new songs, and um, I don't know. It seems to be coming easier now. Okay. Are, are you a fast writer in general? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Are those, the, are those the best ones, or are those the worst ones? Usually, they're, they're the really good ones. Okay. Yeah, that's the way it is, isn't it? Um. I'm not sure how familiar you are with some of these songs. Like? Um, a song called No Fun Anymore. Oh, yes, I love it. I mean, I've heard the whole album multiple times and, and love it from start to finish, yeah. So I changed that a little bit, but that's one of the songs that Epic said was no good. Oh, wow. Uh, again. Uh, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I made it a little shorter. I did change it a little bit. Uh, plus, I had a lead singer in the band at that time. Well, that, was that the Lion guy? Yes. <laughs> okay. You really have been doing your research, yeah. Oh, yeah. Joshua Lion. Yeah. How well, do we here, buddy? All right. Wow. <laughs> I got yeah, my uncorrected you... proof here. The original. <laughs> wow. Well, I, you know, you would like a. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the final, actual finished version. I think. So, oh, well, I don't know. It's pretty close. If it isn't. It's, it's real close, yeah. Um, but I can get you uh, another one, if you like. Um, or you could just go see the movie. Right? <laughs> well, I want I want I actually want to get to that, but but a couple yeah. of other music questions first. You know, sure. talking about all the stuff you've done over the years, I mean, I, I kind of would like to see you put out some sort of a box set or an anthology or something, because... You know, you've you've done all these different things, and it's kind of all over the place, and you can kind of find a lot of it online, but not all of it. And have you ever? I mean, would you like to do that, or has anybody I'd, even given any thought to it? I'd love to, but you yeah. know, I, I'd have to do it myself at this point. You know, yeah. do, you, I mean, do you have all the rights to all that stuff? I mean, or would you have to like go and try and get some of it back from people? Um, well, I could put I put it in 1996 uh, when I got my drummer Pat and put it out in an album called. Uh, the band was called Stop. Right. The album was called Never. Um, I, I couldn't find anybody to put it out. Just I couldn't find anybody to put out Lester Bangs' album. Yeah, you sure, know? Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, so I finally found this label in Chico, California. And he said, you know, you found the smallest label in the United States. 
I said, wow, that's great, cool. And that's, you know, it's not easy to find the smallest label in the country, you know. So he, he pressed up 2,000 uh, CDs, and we did got a tour of England, uh, played live on the BBC. Actually, they had five of those songs in heavy rotation on the BBC. Um, but, you know, I, what can I do with that now? So, but they're great songs. There's a lot of really good songs. Yeah, yeah. I, but I put, you know, I, I paid for them myself. I was you know, working my ass off, driving a taxi, borrowing money from people. Um, this is after I had gotten arrested for uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, you, you know, that album is uh, like 14 songs and really good songs too. But uh, everything I've done pretty much uh, up until now, or I put out myself, hmm, okay. or at least I pay for the recording myself. Yeah. Talk so right about, when I came out on Jam, that was just a press and distribution. You know? Right. Yeah. Talk, talking about uh, driving a cab, I'm also I'm fairly certain you you served me many beers at Coney Island High back in the day. I did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yes. <laughs> and I think you were a good tipper. I, I tried. I believe one time I gave you two 20s stuck together and you came back to me and, and you said, hey, here's your 20 back. Can I have Ooh. 10 of it? Wow. <laughs> I'm good at that. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Eh, you don't remember that at all. Right that way, as, as opposed to you telling me, you know, I gave this bartender two 20s stuck together just to see if he would. Uh... Oh, yeah, it was a test. Yeah, it was a test. Yeah. So, right. so talking about writing the book, from what I think I've, I've read, uh, you say earlier that it was it was a, obviously a long, hard, kind of arduous process for you. Um, have you gone back since and, and read it again? And uh, what are your thoughts on it now? You know, maybe you mentioned it at a, at a uh, timely occasion uh, because I'm just starting to work with the screenplay writers now. So they asked me to find... Um, you know some of the rough drafts or some of the stuff that we didn't that that didn't get into the book, and um, I'm, I'm I know I'm going to have to be on the set. I'm going to have to be working with these guys, and I, and I've been telling it to myself. <laughs> You're going to have to read that book again. You know, they're and not really eager to do that. Not really eager to do it. No, just because uh, of because of all the stuff it brings up, or um yeah okay. especially the end i guess you know but i i'm gonna have to and i should and i and i i remember that i intentionally tried to balance out the sad stuff with funny stuff it works you did and, and the, th the thing that i really love about it is you also balance out um the personal stuff with the the ramon stuff you know what i mean so so if you're if you're into you know if you come to it for the ramon story you'll get that but i what i really loved was all the sort of behind the curtain backstage you know you guys growing up meeting dwight eisenhower not getting to see the beatles all that shit is is for me the sort of way more interesting thing because you know there are 57 other ramones books out there but exactly right you know why uh what you know people get mad get pissed off at me some of their fans this is no ramones book yeah i don't want to read about your brother you know um <laughs> well why else but, would you buy the book <laughs> well right you, i say uh you know when you got that book the, it said i there was an i i slept with you know so yeah. that should have given you a clue that it was not <laughs> only about the uh, the Ramones, yeah. but you know, I, it was there was so many subplots and so many threads. You know, the family angle, the my brother's uh, physical problems, um, the divorces, the uh, you know me growing, being friends with Johnny and Tommy, and uh, you know, before, and bands with them before my brother even knew them, and. Um, so many, it was really hard to tie it all together at the end. Well, you did a great job. I mean, there's, there's no getting around that. Thank you very much. Uh, did, you know, did just you always write, want there to be a movie version? You know, everybody knows the ending. That, that's, yeah. that's quite hard. 
Yeah. Did you did you always want there to be a movie? Did you hope there would be a movie, or were you kind of trepidatious about it, and you know, having to sort of have this story, you know, taken away and made into something by Hollywood? You know. Well, that's why it hasn't happened until now. No, what, what 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 sort of made it happen in a way that you were happy with? That um, the these people convinced me <laughs> i guess okay that um they were they loved the story they wanted something different they didn't want another just a, like a rock bio uh they liked the family they liked that it was beyond it that it had the elements of a rock bio but more and that's that was how i approach writing the book mm -hmm. you know it's 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 about brothers and family and uh, um, it's, it's a much more universal story that any family can relate to. It's like, you know, not only if you, you, your brother became a rock star and, and you had been the one who was skipping grades in school and your brother was the fuck up, right? Yeah. But then, <laughs> then the tables turn and, you know, from your, your parents like always yelling at him and you getting pats on the back and now you're the now you're the, you know he's the golden boy and I'm the piece of crap right um, so it, you know I'm sure that happens in a lot of families sure. not, not, I don't say I'm the piece of crap my mom always loved me and uh, but you know my father only respected success so um, was it hot cold, cold turkey for a hot papa was that it. <laughs> Single? You gotta but, put that online if that's not up there somewhere. You know, um, it's it's it. I have the tape, but it needs to be baked. You know, it's so yeah. old. Yeah, the yeah, Ampex yeah. tape. I'd have to send it to, to a, the confectionery oven, and um, I don't know. I guess uh, <laughs> I, I'm, it's sort of embarrassing. <laughs> My father say, I don't know. I should. I guess. Uh, I don't want people laughing. You know, that's that was why I didn't really want to put it out in the first place. It, I don't want people laughing at the at the old man. You know. I hear you. So, but, so talking about the movie, I mean, obviously, I want to put my father in like a role with the pipe, like you have to, with girls all around them, and uh, maybe it wouldn't be fun. But I don't know. <laughs> the reason I um, held that tape was for another reason, though, because. Um, my brother had asked me to help him write a song, and I put some music into it, and he uh, went and recorded it. Um, but then he wanted somebody else. He wanted me to teach the part to somebody else. He said, "Well, oh, fuck it, you know." I came up with that part, and but you don't want me to play on this record, but you want me to teach it to somebody else, you know. So uh, I said, no, because this is just going to cause another really big fight between you and me. You know, I have to stop doing this because then I'm just going to be really mad at you and we're going to have another fight. So he, not that he understood, but I said, but I'm actually preventing us from getting into a whole other fiasco. I uh, not hold the same, unless you want to give me songwriting credit. Yeah, you were really honest in the book, though, about all that, about all that stuff between the two of you. I mean, that must have a been hard to to just put on the page and 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 do. And then I'm guessing you must have got a lot of blowback over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, still. Yeah, still. Still getting blowback. Yeah, uh, you're jealous of your brother. You think you know you. Um, yeah, I'm still getting blowback. That's stupid. I mean, it's just that's that's normal family stuff, except there just happened to be one of you was a rock star, you know. Um, I guess it's well, yeah. And I guess it's normal family stuff, but uh, you know, we had to go to a. I, me and my mom went to a, a therapist because it was she was she would she was in a tough spot. She had to kind of play. You know, she wanted us to come together so she couldn't say something bad about me and she couldn't say something bad about him. But um, so we went to a therapist. I said, Ma, I, I can't take this, you know, you defending them. Um, uh, you know, I, 
I didn't do any. I'm getting taken advantage of here, you know. And uh, the therapist said, well, um, if it, this is the problem and it bothers you so much, stop. Tell them no. <laughs> Say no, I won't, you know, ask somebody else. Which I never had done before, you know. But I, I guess, and, you know, she was right. I guess I, if I'm going to complain about it, then I sh shouldn't do it. And, um, you know, that uh, that caused a whole other conflagration. And yet after all of this stuff, I mean, you're, you're kind of the keeper of the of the flame, as it were. I mean, you know, you've been going through all the, the photos and obviously the book and the movie. I mean, you're wearing a Joey Ramone shirt in this interview. Is that still, is that still kind of, I mean, is it is it kind of conflicting to you even at this stage or are you have you been able to sort of put all that other that stuff is all water under the bridge now you mean like the personal stuff between yeah him yeah, and yeah. Yeah. yeah um you know before he passed away we uh we had a really great reconciliation right. you know uh, he came to see my band unfortunately it was only a few months before he he fell but he came to see my band and uh, he said, come on, let's, let's sit down. And I said, you know, it's my friend's birthday. I want you, I'm going to go sing him happy birthday like we did uh, Simpsons style. I want, why don't you come and uh, sing it with me, right? Yeah. I was really surprised. Our father had passed away two months prior to that. Right. So that might have been sort of one of the reasons he was trying to soften things up a little bit but I don't know um, so I said yeah sure of course and uh, we went um, to Man Manitoba's bar yeah. and uh, sang happy birthday to his friend and then when we finished that well it's in the book I don't know if I'm repeating myself should I tell you okay, I mean I, not everybody's read the book I'm okay with that so um, we went there it was a you know it was December 12th, really cold night, but you know the Christmas spirit was out there. That the, you know the uh, the glistening things were everywhere, and um, so after we sang Happy Birthday to his friend, he turned to me and said, "You want to do another one?" I said, "Yeah, sure," and uh, then another one, then another one. <laughs> Exactly. And we were singing songs together, uh, you know, till three o'clock in the morning. And then we gave each other a big hug and said, let's, let's just forget about all this stupid. Yeah, well, and then good. I'm glad you, you were able to get to that place, right? I mean, it'd be, you know, would be shitty. Our, oh, man, it would have been horrible. Yeah. So back, back to the movie. Um, I, Pete Davidson, obviously, a lot of people were surprised uh, by that. Um, a lot of people were more than surprised, I guess. Um, obviously, you know, the people, you even the people making the movie saw something in him that made them go, that made you go, well, he's the right guy for the job. Um, I'm wondering what that was that sort of sold you on him doing the part. Well, actually, um, when they came, when the producers uh, came to me with it, he was already on board. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that made it all that much uh, easier, you know. Did, did you see a tape or something or, or an audition or a photo or something? Because a lot of people are obviously talking about the look, you know? Well, I saw Pete when he uh, first came on Saturday Night Live. I was always a big fan of him. And oh, yeah. I told him this. I said, uh, you know, I like you the first time I saw you on uh, set um, SNL because you remind me of my, my goofy, fr my goofball friends from Forest Hills. I I was wondering to see how he would take that. <laughs> he got pissed off, like uh, you know, because I, I said, "You like my goofball friends from Forest Hills?" That, I, you know, maybe I would have blown it, but he he, he laughed. Yeah, you know, he knew what I was talking about. And he's a good uh, actor. Uh, is he a good actor? Uh, he is a good actor, I think. So I think he should be able to do it. You know. I don't know. You see, um, this is. Uh, kind of why he wanted to take this role he wants to make that transition from comedic actor 
I don't know if he's done any. I haven't seen everything he's done. Uh, he so. did. Uh, he did a movie called King of Staten Island, which was sort of based very <laughs> loosely on his life and losing his father and all that. Yeah. But he was pretty much playing himself. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's it's still a dramatic, you know, kind of dramatic role. So you know. Right, but it's not like. He's it's no, it's not. Yeah, it's not a biopic or anything. Yeah. So, well, it's so. not going out of. He he wasn't going out of his own head. I mean, right. he was him, you know. Right. And uh, that's pretty much the, uh, you know, the the big bang against him is that he's never done anything. He's always Pete Davidson, whatever he does, you know. Well, I guess we'll see. Who should play you? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I don't know how much say I have over it. Um, but they're all being really cool. Uh, the, you know, the producers and the writers, everybody's being really great. So I, I'm, I'm really hopeful this thing is going to work out well, but I don't, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know uh, how to approach thinking about it. What do you, what do you, you know, what would you do? I, mean, I, I you know, you're going to be on set and you're going to be watching two other people act out scenes from you and your brother's life. <laughs> So, that's going to be kind of mind blowing, isn't it? It's, it's, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I, maybe I shouldn't tell you that. I don't know. Is this 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 is this is not live, is it? No. Okay. You are you going to edit a little bit? Yeah. Um, I'll let it I out your pee break. Don't worry. I don't. I don't know if. Uh, um, I want them to hear me say that I'm dreading it. But, I don't think you're dreading it because you think it's going to be bad. I mean, I think you're dreading well, it because of the personal yeah, quality. Because the same way I would be dreading it. That's that's. There's nothing bad about that. Well, because I'm going to have to be reliving the, all of these things, especially the end. I, well, if they get to the end, um, I still don't really know. I, they haven't shown me the screenplay yet. I've just been sending them, uh, you know, extraneous material that wasn't in the book. Mm. Let's see if there's anything else they want to use. And I'm still digging through all kinds of files to get them as much as I can. So I have, but I haven't seen anything. But I've been assured by them that they want to stick to the story. Um, they think that's the what was gonna, is going to separate it from all these other rock uh, biopics and what's going to appeal to everybody, you know. And that's the way I wrote it. I wrote it. I did write it with a screenplay in mind. Oh, I even, okay. actually even told them, you know, there's a screenplay hidden in that book. I <laughs> see if you can find it, you know. Well, they did. And now you're going to have to clear a spot on your shelf for an Oscar, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or uh, at least, uh, you know, maybe the table here. There you go. You can move the peanuts. And... <laughs> So yeah. Talking about uh, talking about going would, through, uh, there's nothing I would get an Oscar for, really, or an award. No, I guess you could you could share if the if the screenplay won an award, you could maybe share in it. But you know, those guys, I doubt they. You know, they did. I don't think they'd share with me. But, oh, well. um, so talking about talking about digging through stuff, I, I I see on the on Facebook that you know you've been going through a lot of old photographs and stuff lately. Um, what prompted that? Are you are you thinking maybe about doing a, a photo book uh, or something else with this stuff? Well, what prompted it is that um, after my brother died and then my mom died, um, my mom was uh, an artist and uh, she had an art gallery. She had collected a lot of paintings and artworks. Uh, there was I had three storage rooms full of their stuff, right? And then I was writing the book and then other things. That I'm, I'm finally, I finally said, I have to get this stuff taken care of. You know, we did have a few auctions, but there's still things in that of my brother's, uh, like his treadmill and his weights and uh, um, records and tapes and VHS things, toys that he picked up all over the world. There's so much stuff 
So I said, all right, now's the time. Be maybe the, because of the pandemic also, I, um, all I could really grab at the, at the moment, at the, from when I went there was these three bins of photos. So I figured, let me start there, you know? Okay. Maybe there's something that would uh, be applicable to this movie or something, but um, there's a long way to go. I mean, I only took out three bins of photos uh, and I found some gems, really. Oh yeah. Um, if they were handy, I'd show them to you if you want to see, if you want to wait a minute. If they're handy, sure. Um, let me see. Oh boy, everything came over. <laughs> I didn't find the thing I was looking for for you okay. to show you. But um, there's things like this, my mom. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> me. So we went to um, the Grand Canyon. Go up a uh, little bit. Yeah, there you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, in uh, 2002. Wow. We were supposed to go in 2001, September 12th. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so glad I got to take that trip with her. A wedding. No kidding. Yeah. Nice. This is uh, this is my mom's boyfriend from that same trip. But those aren't the things I wanted to show you. Yeah. That is yeah, that is great. I love the hair. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, my mom and dad. Top hat. <laughs> um, I don't think this is my brother, but uh, huh? It's a neighbor, I think. Uh, see what else we got here. This, this is, uh, I th it's in the book, I think, this okay. picture. This is the last, this is that night that I was telling you about. Right, right. When we went and sang happy birthday yeah. to a friend at Manitoba's, and then we just kept singing. No, nope, that was that night. Nice one. That was the last time he ever sang anywhere in public. Wow. Yeah, and we sang together. That's so a it, it, you know, sort of the screenplay I'm telling you about. <laughs> we sang our. I don't know if I have a picture of that. We sang our first songs together in the basement, and the last songs. Together. That's fitting. Yeah, right. Aside from the photos, have you found any sort of other kind of keepsakes or treasures? Um yeah. Um well, what kinds of memorabilia? Yeah. Yeah. But what, what what types of things are you talking about? Again? Like Ramones kind of stuff? Oh, anything. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, have you, you know, just come across any sort of a keepsake that you didn't even know existed or that you'd forgotten about or something that just made you go, oh, holy crap, I had no idea this was here. Yeah, I keep, I keep doing that all the time, but this it's so many, I can't remember, like, what? Yeah, there's so oh. much stuff, huh? Oh, that's a sweet picture. Yeah. You need to do a photo book, man. I should, if I could find this other one for you, but this other book that my mom made, in the, uh, she made it 70 years ago. Wow. My brother was born. Yes, I know. Yeah, he would be 70 this year. Right. And it's, uh, it's so fragile. I turning the pages, it just, the paper just comes off. But, um, that book has incredible things. And Joey, a uh, little Joey and me too, with babies. And, uh, my dad, my mom, 
Oh, wow. I'm sure you're thrilled. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's nice. It's interesting. I have some slides. Uh, you... <laughs> yes, <laughs> set up the projector. Uh, we'll turn the lights down. Oh. So it's, we're trying... coming up now. We're coming up now on 50 years of, of, of punk rock. You know, in a few more years, it's going to be 50 years since the first Ramones album and all this stuff. And there, you know, there's going to be the usual like reissues. What was, what was the first year? Well, I mean, you know, we were talking 75, 76, I think when, you know, stuff starts gelling, right? So, I mean, a couple it's more the, years. When the so actual, I mean, when the term was actually coined. Oh, I don't know about that, but yeah. But yeah, I'm just wondering how you would like to see this all sort of marked because, you know, there's going to be the usual tribute album and some expanded reissues or something, but is there something you would like people to do to sort of mark this occasion? Uh, me personally? Yeah. Or for, for, uh... Well, for you, for wh whoever. I mean, uh, again, 50 years since all of this stuff happened that you were a part of, kind of right there at the at the beginning of, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a strange kind of feeling about it. Um, like, I don't want to sound jaded or bitter, but I'm just kind of sick of the Paul Punk thing. <laughs> I'm sick of, like, what's punk? You're not punk. This is punk. You know, I, I wish you, you know, I saw a, a, a musical revolution when I was like uh, nine years old with the Beatles. Um, you know, that whole phenomenon, that amazing time. And then in the 70s, with the, you know, it wasn't quite like the Beatles uh, or the, but. It was, um, you know, an amazing, uh, creative uh, time. Uh, the Blondie, Talking Heads, Ramones. And, um, I'd like to see another period like that. Yes, that yeah. would be great. Yeah, some some a great new revolution in music would be, yeah, the best way to... Honor to, years. See the, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of punk? Yeah. Let's see something totally fucking different. That no. is perfect, sir. I can't, I can't top that. Listen, <laughs> I have. I, you really want to celebrate punk? You know, don't do it. <laughs> do something else. Do that, something that would different. Be the, perfect, the perfect punk answer to that. Yes, indeed. Yeah, don't do the same shit. <laughs> you know, but not. I mean, there's, some of it's good. A good, you know. Me and my brother always agree. A great song is a great song. You know, sure. whether it's all by myself or uh you know uh she got a tv uh, whatever it is if it's a great song you know I like the went from eric carmen to iggy pop there very nice sir. <laughs> naturally uh, uh yeah um you know the, I just it seems like things have come to a well, not just in music, I guess, in everything. Everything is just, uh, you know, a uh, formula mm -hmm. these days. Um, the people, are, maybe, I hope there's people out there trying to do something really out, out of the box. And every once in a while you see it. But musically, not so much. Um, I don't know if it's the uh, record company's fault. I... I I get. I would think, right? it, yeah. Yeah. For the most part, uh, because they don't really—they're not interested in, in exposing new things. Now I'm sounding like my brother, but it's—it's it's the same rap he used to give. But it's true, you know. Um, They—it's a business. I understand that. I've been on both sides. I had a little record company, and uh, you know, you want to do what's going to have the best chance of being successful but um, in my opinion the best chance of something having success if you think it's good at least is if it's not like everything else yep no. uh, that's what, is undervalued. I, I love Devo and uh, the B-52s and, um, and the Clash as well you know but it's all different you know, um, I, I like Miley Cyrus. 
You do? I do. I think oh, there, that, goes, there goes your there goes your street cred right out the window, man. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, but she's hanging out with Pete Davidson. Yeah. Yes. Right. But I saw her sing Jolene with Dolly Parton, who's her maybe uh, not her aunt, but her godmother or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was fucking impressed, man. She she's really good. She's great. She had a lot of talent, that girl. And uh, and there was some other another song I actually posted on my Facebook. I forgot the name of it, but um, you never know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I I still have to suffer the uh, Ashley Simpson syndrome. Me personally. Okay. You know, you know what it, uh, Jessica Simpson's yeah, sister. Yeah, yeah. He was the one who got caught lip syncing on Saturday Night Live, you mean? Um, but it's, you know, and I guess I'm guilty of it myself, of <laughs> thinking like, oh, yeah, of course she got a deal. You know, of course she's on Saturday Night Live, you know. The, the, and that's what people think about me, too, you know. But it's not working now. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> people are still telling me, man, every fucking day, you're riding your brother's coattails. I'm saying, well, man, it's been a long ride, and I feel like I just got one block. You know? 